After nearly a decade in sales and marketing within B2B Sports Tech, here are my tips on how to build a commercial engine for B2B sports technology companies. A massive headache for B2B sports technology company owners is cash flow, aka deal flow, aka deal predictability. So imagine if I told you that you're talking to someone now, you're actually giving them a demo, but you knew in your mind based on the data that you had that you were going to have a 70% chance of landing them and getting payment in six months. Well, that would be magic. But the principles I'm going to lay out today have helped me in my dealings in my company, but also other companies that I've worked with get a better understanding of their deal flow and ultimately deal and revenue predictability. So the first thing that you need to do is look at the deals that you have had. What sort of stages have happened throughout these deals? I would be talking to people that have been heavily involved in the deals within the company and sort of try try your best to break down, okay, what has happened at each stage and who was involved? What you can then do is map out the deal flow. I'm going to put an example up here and this is the one that we're going to follow but what you can do is download the file that I'm showing here and put in your own metrics to be able to work with it but but stay with me and we can see how we can work this file through. So in my example I have a relatively complex GPS reporting product. So I might have an inbound lead or I might have made an outbound call so we're at stage zero. There actually is no deal in our deal track or, or CRM. We have a quick qualifying call. Yeah, we're interested in a demo. At this stage the salesperson is is responsible for it. If we've qualified them for a demo, I'd recommend putting, in this example, we put them to a stage one. In these circumstances, it's either a one-on-one demo and I'd keep these pretty short or it might be a little bit longer where you've got not only one person from the club but multiple people from the club and it's a bit of an extension of that. Either way, this framework still plays out. You have that one call or that second call and in our example, what would likely happen is Clients would look at it and go, yep, that's really cool. We love it. We want to buy it. Okay, you can step step through the phases on the sales framework, but more than likely, clubs are going to say, yeah, okay, we like the way you do acute chronic here, but we actually do planned load a little bit differently. Can you show us that? In our example here, based on the sales framework, we know that some deals, yep, can get pushed through from the salesperson just, just selling and getting through, but some deals might require an SME, a subject matter expert to come in and help. We don't want to put the SME on every single sales call for resource reasons, but we want to be able to pull them in where possible. So in our sales framework here, we have a secondary demo, what's, what's classed here as a personalized demo where the SME can come in and help out. So now we're at stage two, we're at a personalized demo and we have the SME and salesperson responsible. Just as a quick aside, I worked with a company where it was a pretty similar sort of sales process and the key to this, especially when you knew that sometimes you needed the SME and sometimes you didn't, was to make sure that the, the qualifying call was, was really good. So you knew, okay, straight away we're gonna bring in the SME or you had a very relatively short uh, first call, first demo. So see this call here? We made sure in our example, it was it was deliberately short, sort of 15 to 20 minutes. And we made a point of being like, almost not necessarily selling the product, but if the questions started coming in thick and fast that were quite technical, like selling the superstar that it was the SME, it's like, oh, you're gonna love Josh, or oh, you're gonna love Carolyn, like they're gonna be able to show you all these cool things and almost selling that second call. So when you say, hey, let's get on a call, you know, tomorrow or this afternoon or whatever with Carolyn or with Josh or with Alistair or whatever, they're going, oh, cool, okay. Anyway, jumping back. So in this sales framework here, we've had our personalized demo and they say, yep, okay, let's get on to pricing. You make sure you have a separate pricing meeting and I can talk to about it maybe, <laughs> maybe at another time, but have a separate pricing meeting where you go through the pricing discussions on our framework, it goes through, and some clubs may want a trial, and depending on your model, you may give out a trial or not. So I'd be including that in your sales framework, and then it pushes through to contracting, and then closed one. That's just an example, and again, you can download this example and have at it and put your own stages in this file. But what I hope you can see is if we're putting this into a, into our deal tracker, whether it's Excel or a CRM, what you'll soon be able to see is that, okay, if we get people to stage two, we have a 50% confidence that, or a 50% probability that it's going, the deal is going to, to come through. And if or when you start facing some bottlenecks within the deal stage, what that really allows you to do gives you some objective met- metrics to be able to hone in on. So maybe there's a bottleneck at stage three. It's like, okay, what's happening at stage three? Go in, ask the question. Okay, but why? 
get the answer. Okay, but why? Get the answer. And it may not be a problem at stage three. It may be a problem at qualifying at stage one, or it could be something that's happening at stage two. But that's the beauty of of creating these stages. It gives you a good idea of predictability, but it also gives you a really good way to troubleshoot your sales process. I could probably talk for another half an hour on this topic, but I'll leave it there. Again, you can download the sales framework that we just went through and plug in your own different stages. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me. If you have any comments, please put them in there. If you have your own experiences, good, bad, indifferent, I would love to hear from you over the next couple of weeks. We're going through a few more of my B2B sports tech sales and marketing tips and experiences. If you're interested, follow for more. See you on the next one.